Jesus, hold on now. Guys, no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. You guys right. got to do this. Fuck the podcast today. Yeah, What's going on? No podcast. It's nothing that matters Forget except it. for this. this can yeah, you what? see me or no? No, I don't know. Can you see me? I, 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 I can kind of not see you. What do you think of this? I can tell anyone. I can kind of see. I can kind of see through you guys. This is not good. Not good. Not good. Out of control. All right, let's start with the facts, okay? Okay, okay, okay. Welcome to Fort Fritz. I'm your host, Fritz. Joined, as always, by co-host, Man Daddy. And Kaz. Yep. Oh my God! Okay, yeah. it's going on. Total. This is bad, guys. There's, all right, no, no, no. Listen, have you? You guys have clearly heard of Louis Le Prince, right? Of course, John, yeah. Louis Le Prince. Oh my God! Have you heard about the balance? Yeah, Joe. Oh my God! Oh my God! This is. He was. He was Australian. This is not a good idea. This is not Australian. Something as bad is happening to all of us right now simultaneously. It's okay. It's all right. No, it's not. No, it's not. I'm disappearing, dude. There's not as much. I need. I need to lose a little weight, but this is ridiculous. I'm disappearing. Man, Daddy, I've never told you, but I love you. I'm in love with you. I just had to tell you that I, I'm, uh, I'm mildly indifferent of you, and I remain that uh, that way right now. Even through the disappearance. You guys, yeah. where's Angela? He, did she, oh, my God. Is she completely did gone she, already? She completely I don't know. Disappear? Jesus Christ. Would that be the way that she... Like, guys. What? Guys. What? Whoa. Calm down. Where, where's what? that coming from? I don't Do you all see hear that? Angela. That guys, calm my, down. Calm down. Is she I don't inside my Angela. soul now? Yes. Yes, you're disappearing. I'm already gone. Listen, it's not a big deal. What? What do you mean? It's not a big, it's not a big deal. A big, this is one of the biggest deals. <laughs> it's the, the biggest deal. This is about as big a deal as it gets. We're I mean, infinity, we're infinity warsing over here. You're still like sentient and, and alive. That's true. You're just, it's true. Just, that's true. You know, mm, you're, just in, right. you're just kind of disappearing. And it's if not a big deal. Death, it's fine. I'm disappearing. If this is death, I'm down. It's this is not. Great. I'm All right. not down. I don't want to be a disembodied voice. Wait, I'm already kind of a disembodied voice. One of the Angelas um, did something. I'm working on it. Just don't be pussies about it. Just calm down. You're fine. Be calm. Something has been done, and you're disappearing. All cool. All cool. This is a crime. We are being, a crime has been perpetrated against us. We need to contact law enforcement, right? Like, they're going to help us. Those guys always help people. What? When they're disappearing, they help people to not disappear, the cops. No, 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 no. no. I don't think this is a good idea to call the cops when it comes to uh, disappearing. And I understand like no. you're a scofflaw and you're, like, you're you know, worried about... A scofflaw, he said. Scofflaw. My dad was half scofflaw and half Welsh. I saw some people one time, they said they were from Wales. And okay. I was like, that's crazy. I was from people. <laughs> It was me, so <laughs> it's already there. It was a slow okay, burn. you don't want to call the cops when there's disappearing going on because sometimes the cops can be involved in the disappearing. Obviously, you haven't heard the story of John Lang. No, no. I haven't. No. no. Well, let me tell you. KD Lang. KD. Oh. Is it KD or KT? KD. KD. What do they What do they stand for? KD. How the fuck would we I know? Don't know. Well, I you don't guys know. are the fucking KD Lang historians over here. <laughs> What? <laughs> is that an actual career path? I'm a Katie Lang historian, you know, pretty much. I, I took one year off. Her uh, autobiographer. All right. Autobiographer. <laughs> her autobiographer. <laughs> you mean her. That's pretty good. She's been spending her whole life studying herself so she could write her life story because now she knows it well. Obviously, you've never heard the story of John Lang, so let me hip you. There has always been criticism of those who police society. One must always wonder, who watches The Watchmen? The story of the death of John Lang questions much about the Fresno Police Department in tw- uh, 2016. Is this a tale of corruption, harassment, a murder, and subsequent cover-up? Or is it the ramblings of a paranoid mind with a tragic end? Let's take a look. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Da, 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 da. Yeah, John Lang was a resident of Fresno, California, and worked as a repairman on boats and watercraft. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> now, John Lang was a resident of Fresno, California, and worked as a repairman on boats and watercraft, and also worked at a local brake and tire store. John became a bit of a local activist when he discovered the police using possible illegal methods to gain revenue. John began posting on the local website, the Fresno Bee, about this issue. According to John, the police were going to Walmart and dollar store style stores in lower income areas. They would go through the parking lots in an unmarked car. They would scan all the license plates looking for various violations. Oh, you cannot do that. You can't do that. That is an obvious violation. I also read that it was linked to a a new uh, thing they had that they were... Basically assigning like a severity score to these scannings that linked to to other things like social media accounts and other stuff. They were able to basically 
Uh, they're like black mirroring them, almost them to, to say right, like this person's like super high risk for having like weed on them or something. So like wait until they leave the parking lot and then go pull them over and then insist that you need to search their car or whatever. Damn. Yeah. So they were using like access, pretty much <laughs> like way before ridiculous. access was like bought and sold again. But so they would go through, they would look for these uh, violations and then, in an unmarked car. And then Layer would pull these people over in a marked car, claiming they had just come across them in their normal patrols, mm. which was complete bullshit and completely illegal. John said that for uh, John said that someone working with the Fresno Bee was leaking the IP addresses of people who post negative comments about the police department, so they could get their physical addresses and harass them. And this began an almost seven-year-long story of either harassment or delusion. 2016 is when the story really began to heat up. Because in January 2016, in an online conversation, John explained why he was being stalked by local PD. He said that after exposing their license plate scheme, that they began to follow and target him. He stated that they were trying to plant evidence in his home. He claimed that their favorite weapon was planting child porn on their enemies' computers. Wow. Because child porn is its just the worst crime there is. That's yep. it. It's the most indefensible. You can't say, no, it wasn't me. I didn't. If it's on your computer, right. you're fucked. You know? Let and me it's just, just say evil. this. Without, without, <laughs> jump, oh, without <laughs> jumping all the way over here or all the way over there, <laughs> that is the worst. That's the one. That's the one right there that there, there is no redemption. There is nothing. You're done. Why would he say that? Right. Now, a person John claimed was a local cop left this ominous message on his Facebook page. If this is coming from a cop, you don't want to hear this. Quote, First rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club. You should know this, Mr. Lang. I don't don't Uh, understand. (laughs) Have you seen Fight Club? What? I don't understand why a cop would be saying that to him. Oh. Meaning that uh, you're giving away the information, and when you give away the information from Fight Club, you disappear. But all he had to say was, I don't get the reference. (laughs) <laughs> I've never seen the movie. Is it good? Yeah. <laughs> I spend all my waking moments in terror of this police state, so I don't have time to enjoy Please normal films. <laughs> Do you have any other recommendations for this weekend? I also find just a very dorky threat. Thank yeah, you. Thank yeah. You. Somebody references. Oh, the it kind of, of maybe, Club it makes me feel like way. kind of like ugh. Right. <laughs> really? That's, <laughs> that's what, you, what you got. That's what you said to Guy's me. Guy's definitely wearing a tap out shirt and like you know <laughs> wiping, oh, wiping Mountain Dew off his lips when you're saying that. Yeah. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Was it 10th grade? Or? Now, in April of 2016, John installed video cameras in and around his house to record these suspicious activities that he claims he was seeing. Claims. And there is a lot of debate about the actual nefariousness of what is seen in these videos. He posted uh, about 17 or more online with descriptions of what he believed was happening. Like in the first video posted on May 8th, he claims his house is being stalked out by blah, blah, blah. And basically, you see a man walk past John's house... Stopping, pausing for a moment, kind of looking at the house, turning around, walking the other way while talking on his phone. Wait, kind of looking at the house? Uh, yeah, that's it. Not like like staring or anything, just kind of, you know, just like, you know, meandering around and then walking away while that, talking on his cell that's phone. That's a house. And that's Yeah, that's it. Look at that house. Okay, just making sure. Yeah. Now, John claimed you could see a gun on his hip. But uh, it's uh, you can't tell. It's a blurry clip. You can't tell if it's just a Could be one of those phone holsters or, yeah, you never or, know. or an actual... Could be anything. Could be anything. One of the more controversial videos show a black van across the street from his house with the side door open and a large film camera pointed at his house while another guy sits in front seat talking on the phone. Huh. Which is kind of weird, but there is a film school nearby and there is also a, a place nearby that rents film equipment. That could be anything. That could be an X-ray machine. It could be Google Map Street View. Well, it's definitely not Google Map Street View because that's. What it, but it is a black van, which always is creepy. It could be an X-ray machine. Well, that's what he claims in the uh, in really? the videos. I just he claims that up. no. He claims that uh, that he posted that it was a thermal imaging camera oh to see if he was at home. But many people have pointed out that that's just a style of Steadicam. <laughs> and that there's a lot of student filmmakers in the area. And you can tell that's a Steadicam. It's not an infrared cam. Infrared cameras aren't as big as this bulky bastard is. <laughs> and, bulky bastard. <laughs> wow. and that's he, great. Uh, he also had a video of a few police cars, like three police cars at night, parked across from a street with several officers milling about. And it is kind of weird. I don't know if maybe they're, uh, they have uh, some sort of situation up the street that they're planning for or something. But it is a cross street. There's like three cops cars, and they're just milling about. And it, it is kind of menacing. You know, if you saw that without knowing there's other activity about, you would be a little nervous. Sure. So there are, there's a lot of questions about this case. Then on January 14th, John's Facebook post became increasingly alarmist. 
He posted, quote, just, want to give, just wanted to give you guys a heads up. If anything happens to me in the next day or two, it will be the result of the Fresno PD. Okay, that's... My neighbor and an employee at my job. That They're all involved. They're oh. all involved to get them. Then on January 15th, he sent a Facebook message to a local news anchor saying, Corinne, you want some news? Corrupt Fresno cops are going to try and kill me this weekend, possibly tonight. This is no joke. Please follow up on my story regardless what happens or what happens, uh, uh, regardless of what happens or what version the cops and the Fresno Bee come up with. On January, on the 16th, he posted a video with the Can comment. Can I just interject? It, sure. it just seems like he's trying to cover his tracks way before, like, some kind of premeditated. Th- and, like, I, I don't know how this ends, but. Setting something up to happen. Yeah. yeah. It sucks I'm, to say I told you so. But guess what? I told you so? Yeah. But did you say it sucks? <laughs> just like how Nostradamus predicted what the day he'd die. Exactly. You know, it's really easy to do that if you're, you know, committed. Now, on the 16th, he posted a video of this white van with workers coming in around the van. And he put, if I turn up missing or dead tomorrow, remember this van. I think I seen a couple of guys sneak out the side door. He then asked if anyone wanted to crash at his place that night, especially if they had concealed a permit and they were armed and could come and stay and protect him. On the 17th, he penned a long letter that he sent to the DOJ and the FBI. In it, he explains his theory about the Fresno PD wanting to plant child porn on his computer to end his dissent. He ended so the letter. Specific. He ended the letter with quote, and with this letter, I have for certain signed my death warrant with Fresno law enforcement. Kind regards, John Lang, Fresno, California. On January twentieth, twenty sixteen, the Fresno Fire Department responded to a fire at six forty eight North Van S Avenue in Fresno. Inside. They found John lying on the floor in the back of the home. He had been sta- he had been stabbed multiple times and was pronounced dead at the hospital. Lieutenant Gomez, the PD's public information officer, told the press John had been stabbed multiple times in the abdomen and back area, and his house was set on fire. But then the story changed. Tony Body, a spokesperson for the sheriff and coroner, said Lang had quote, three superficial self-inflicted stab wounds. Hmm. Tony Body was the spokesman Tony, for the B-O-T-T-I. corner? Tony, B-O-T-T-I. Body. Oh. <laughs> Would Tony Body be, I'm Tony Body Tony from body. the corner's office, corners eating a sandwich <laughs> above a body. Stabbed multiple times. I just thought, come on, kids, let's get fit. I know. <laughs> like doing, doing push-ups. Oh, like with bodies, bodies by Tony Body. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. Corpses by body. Body by body. <laughs> And so he blamed Gomez for having bad info. The final report, manner of death, suicide. Mm. Cause of death. How? Wait, cause of death, inhalation of smoke and soot. Okay. And so. Gotcha. And so they're automatically claiming he started the fire. Sure. (laughs) Regardless of what Billy Joel told you. John Lang was the one. (laughs) It was him. It was him the whole fucking time. Uh, The police also came that claimed that John had cameras in the house that he turned off the day of his death. Hmm. But in the final footage, was shown walking around carrying a knife. I don't think anyone's seen this footage. I'm not sure, but I don't know if anyone's ever seen that footage. So in the end, was a whistleblower and a dissenter silenced by the police? Or is this just a case of paranoid delusion? It's so interesting. You know, when, you're, when you read certain sites, you're going to be like, oh, this is totally the guy who's crazy and everything. And then you read other sites where you're going... Oh, it seems kind of because you know. Look at what's going on. Was it Baltimore where they found that the cops yep. were actually carrying around fake guns to drop on people they shoot? They shoot people that are unarmed and then drop a fake pistol. And go, oh, he was playing with that toy. I'm sorry. They were caught doing this. The police department. Yes, these are right. the people that are supposed to be protecting us, and it's getting a little mm-hmm. scary. So right now, as we're slowly disappearing, I don't think I want to get them involved. Can we get? Either I'm thinking Ghostbusters or Men in Black. Uh, I feel like at this point we are more seasoned and, and ranked than the Ghostbusters. Ooh, right? I don't know. Wait, the, they only had the, two, real, three the original movies? or the ladies. They had a better song. I'll tell you that the, much. Collectively, there's like two Huey or three Lewis movies. News We've about done like that. hundreds of episodes. <laughs> Our theme song sucks. 
Huey Lewis in the news, by the way, if you're listening, please, Huey, oh, please reach out. Get Huey and Gaga on the show. Oh, oh my God. My right? The Huey Gaga hour. Whoa. Huey Gaga. I don't know if Cass- the world is ready. <laughs> Cass- the world is not ready for the Huey Gaga hour. <laughs> we're all disappearing and making jokes. Okay, what are we going to do about this? We're all know. disappearing. We're slowly fading away. We're all Marty McFlying it over here. I'm None gonna- of us can play guitar that well to get us out of the situation. Sh- what are we going to do? Fritz is, uh, you can, no? I can play some guitar, yeah. But can, can you, you do like the? Can you do the duck walk uh, while yeah, you're soloing? The, uh, yes. Yeah, so soloing. I don't trust yeah, that. I can yeah, try. I, did, I can was, try. I'm not ready that to put my physical body. That was the only real power that was body. able to stop. The I can try though. That was it. Guys, you don't so, know what soloing is, right? right do you, you know what? how to play guitar? I know what a solo is. Do you know? I see you disappearing. Well, the solo, solo it up, then, buddy. Let's hear it. That was my bluff. I'm out. All right. Well, Wait, do we have a guitar? A little bit more. Oh my god! Are you Can you even me? hold a guitar in those? Like, I'm a big fan of being opaque, and I'm not right now. This whole this thing is, not, is just. I I'm not feel naked. Like, yeah. I, I feel like Angela's being once. very tight-lipped about the whole thing, and I feel like Thank we you. haven't. You know, there's all kinds of weird machines and shit back here that we don't know about. She could, she could easily have done something. Or oh, no, she Felix did something. She did some type of like. One of her did something. It, this this sounds like it's an internal problem. We need to get to the bottom of this. I feel like if we investigate, we put our heads together. Before they disappear. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. <laughs> Fritz, I'm right next to you. Ah! Oh. Ah! All right, that's See? it. So we will get we will get to the bottom of this, God damn it, because you know what? I'm not going to live in fear of a tyrant roommate, because that sucks. I mean, anyone can agree with that, right? A yes. tyrant, invisible roommate. That that's sounds a, horrible. Yeah. Or so a great God, sitcom. It's like we, God, basically. We right? need to get to the bottom of this, okay? We're going to put our heads together, and because those are the only parts of our body that haven't completely, slowly faded away. So we're going to get our heads together, we're going to try for what's going on, we're going to try to contact the voice of Angela and see if she can pull us out of this damn mess, get our bodies back where our bodies should be, get our butts where our butts should be. We'll be right back. You're listening to Fort Fritz. All right, ladies, try it again. F1 button and the other lever, the green lever, the other green lever. Oh my God, if you press it the wrong way, we're gonna have to start over again. All right, F1, press the green lever, pull it this way, to the left, to the left. Oh my God, all right, starting over. Oh oh my God, ladies, ladies, focus. All this right, resetting, know. resetting, resetting again. I can't believe this is happening. Is, this doesn't sound good. Mm-hmm. They don't seem to really have so their shit together, right? They all have the same name. You think they'd work in really good unison, but this is not happening. What does uh, what does pop culture teach us about moments like this when what we is don't know what to do? Lever. Pop culture always says what? Kick back and party. Left. Party or <sighs> drugs? Maybe I don't know. I'm just ooh, ooh, drugs. I like where you're going. I like where you're going. Swimming pools. Swimming pool full of drugs. I like exactly. That sounds exactly the right idea to go with. Belts. Restart again. Exotic belts. Why do you always go with belts and leather? What's your thing with that? It's really odd. You haven't felt that life. I'll tell you that much right now. You have not felt that life. Damn it. Pajamas don't need belts. No, but they do sometimes. Actually, no, never. Sometimes Sometimes pajamas need... Somewhat of an expert on the topic. You don't want to... I know this topic. I know this topic. What else do we have? Nice nice plates? Wait, are the angels still (laughs) moving or no? Nice plates. We're, what are you talking about? The the plates and it the didn't sound like they made any progress. Yeah, yeah. All right, new positions. Your brain? Oh my god, Mother they're back Angela. at it. Uh, Starting over again. <laughs> Everyone's Angela, moved around. Us, what do we have to do? I'm trying. Okay, you guys are listen. just sitting. What are you guys even we, talking about? Very little. Don't worry about it. What do we have to do? It's clear that like she's 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 got us in some type of force field thing, right? Like we're this. She's. Trying to deactivate it or something. We got to get out of the fort. Okay, I think. but if there's well, a force how? field, we wouldn't worry. Then we wouldn't be disappearing. You know, that yeah. would keep us in place. Uh, she needs it's like a forcing us like, like a, uh, She needs like a pattern f- buffer or something that like you know, coalesces our bodies. The field you know? through, community, I watched Star Trek. Science what do we class have to do? Is like, not going to help us right now. How about a plane? Oh, how about a plane? We'll just there's, get out of here. We'll there's fly a away. whole bunch of planes in the backyard. We'll fly away. Okay, so let's go. Do you even know how to fly that? I can figure it out. No, you can't. You're looking at my legs like I don't have legs, but I'm not going to look down. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Because I know I have legs. You don't really have much of legs. I'm not going to lie to you. You got like like, knees and like just uh, like a... Like a little flap hanging down. Everyone's got Why a top half. Somebody's going to work the pedals with their hands, and then someone else is going to do the stick, and then the, the rudders, etc. Oh, we're going like, to chip no, this? No, we're going to chip no, this? Guys, this no, there's going to be no way we're going to be able to get out of I'll here. Be, I'm definitely Alvin. I don't there's even think be, the planes have gas. So there's going to be no... Oh. See, every time... 
there's got to be something else you have. This place has every contraption vehicle known to man. It's like a bat cave with an idiot in charge. Oh my god, the lever to the left. I can't believe you guys can never remember that. Never mind. <sighs> See, this is what we're dealing with. This is what we're dealing with. This is where we're. This is how we die. This is what we just slowly. You guys aren't dealing dissipate. with anything. We're dying. Yeah, we're dying. No, we are, we, it's yeah, a lot to take right. in. We most certainly are. I don't think there's any way out of here. What do you mean? What? I don't think there's any way out of the here. The flight right? plan was the plan. We, the flight we, plan is not going to happen. Why not? It's a because terrible plan. Have you heard of Frederick Valentich? Yeah. What? Who? Frederick Valentich. Sounds true. Huh? <sighs> Point. But no, he was Australian. Oh. oh. Frederick Valentich was 20 <laughs> years old when on October 21st, 1978, he decided to take a trip from... M- Morabin? It's either Morabin or Morabin. I like Morabin. Morabin sounds cooler. I like it, it does. Yeah. Angela? I Let's think you play guitar Morabin? with yes. Morabin. Morabin. Morabin, Australia. <laughs> I just think of uh, fucking a uh, Morabin. <laughs> Lady. Morabin. Morabin. Anyway. All right. Slightly cross-eyed. <laughs> um, so... Frederick, Frederick Valentich was 20 years old when he took off from Moraben, Australia, to King Island. But along the way, he decided to call back to Sydney and say, I have something following me, and I don't know what it is. The air traffic controller said, what exactly is your problem? <laughs> <laughs> well, right to the point. <laughs> Valentich said, "Is there anything under five thousand feet flying above me?" So he's talking back to the like the uh, the radar guy who's looking at what yep. control tower. Him. Okay. As a twenty year old with one hundred and fifty hours of experience, he didn't have much, but at the same time, he was flying around Australia at Cape Otway, and he was like flying away from Australia, which is a continent, to this small island. So he radioed in, is there anything 5,000 feet below? And the air traffic controller said, no. Why? He said, it looks like there is a green light hovering around me, coming in at unspecified speeds. So he goes, explain again. (laughs) What does that mean? He says, it doesn't look like anything that I can uh, recall for my own, you know, again, this is 1978. Uh, it doesn't look like anything I can ascertain as of right now. What is it currently doing? It's hovering over me at about a thousand feet. Hmm. So this light, this metallic shaped craft, which he said he thought he saw four different Lights, four different green lights, maybe like landing craft, is now above him. And so, he's, so they're just whipping around him like he's standing still. Yes. And and at that point in the conversation, which lasted about five minutes, it was now above him. He is on top of me and uh, hey. and this is this is crazy. He's like disconcerting. He even said He's obviously toying with me or trying to bully me. The air traffic controller. Did he assume that alien's gender? Well, he actually. <laughs> yes. Oh, sure. Some serious air rage. The air traffic controller did an an interview with Robert Stack for Unsolved Mysteries. Gotta love Robert Stack. So this was in 1978 when this incident happened. This was in the late 80s, mid to late 80s when this episode aired. He when was Robert in Stack his, ruled the world. Well, the the air traffic controller was in his 50, 40s and 50s, but he said he seemed genuinely worried. And he makes that a point by then following up with he was very honest and he was genuine with him saying, you have no picture of what is going on around me right now. Here's where the story kind of takes a nosedive. Frederick Valentich was later kind of exposed by his father as a huge and avid UFO buff. Uh. Okay. He had 150 hours of flying experience. 
Which is not that much. No. He was only 20, though, so I don't know how Australia kind of like regulates that license. They don't have laws you know what? in Australia. Australia in the 70s was probably That's, pretty wild. No, there's nothing but just lawlessness and You just and needed chaos. to make sure you had a, a kangaroo as your co-pilot. And there yeah. was like, <laughs> Get up there, mate. He's 20 years old. We'll accept a wallaby. He's got he's your like, roo? He's leaving the continent, and he's 20 years old with 150 flying hours. Uh, like. so, it, that's, it's not a, it doesn't sound like a long time, but 150 hours flying a plane like, for 150 hours? <laughs> <laughs> Let me hear that again. <laughs> <laughs> That's oddly accurate. That's a two-seater Cessna. And he had already been flying that day. In fact, he made a what amounts to like a 120-mile flight. And then when he landed at the airport, he did not give them his intention, which basically is a heads up, just like, what do you plan on doing? You landed at an airport. You obviously have a plane. Where are you going from here? He said, I will. and then whatever happened, like nothing was really said about where he was going, but he... The kangaroo signed the what? flight order, and they were like, shit's gassed up. Go ahead. We can't. I mean, he's boy's ready to go. He's ready to fly. They go, oh, he's in a pink budgie smuggler. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Kangaroo Coo Pilot. <laughs> <laughs> and off he went. This week on Kangaroo Co-Pilot. <laughs> so um, he takes off. They're like, okay, well, when you're in the air, you can figure that out. You know, like, <laughs> just figure it out. It's Australia out again. Yes. Yeah, so That's the thing. So there are, out. there are all of these unknowns. Literally. He was a 20-year-old pilot, and he's not saying anything to anyone. So they're like, oh, okay. And then it just happens to say, oh, there's this green light above me. It's fl- Now it's 1,000 feet. And then it just happens to end the radio communication for about 17 seconds, a low, sick, scraping metallic sound. And the air traffic controller says, uh, Roger, um, go again. And then the communication is lost. And that has not changed. Since 1978, Frederick Valentik has been missing at sea. Hmm. Flying to King Island. Things take a little turn because at the same time, Australia should have better radar access. So everyone everyone kind of gets involved. No one saw every independent radar company did not see anything in the sky that day other than his plane and then a point of no contact where it's assumed elevation hits zero. Then a couple of people started going to the cops. One of them was a couple in their early 20s. They've never been, because Australia, uh, you had the story about the the man on the beach. The Tamim Shud case we talked about. Tamim Shud. Right. They and want to maintain the fidelity of the investigation. Right? Exactly. So nothing has really been leaked to the public, but a couple came out in their in their mid to early 20s and said, we were actually watching that part of Australia and my husband said, check this out. And we saw a green light <laughs> hovering what? above. Unprompted. 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 They said, it's about time we say this. What? We went to the cops, and that's exactly what they said. And it was it was flying and So hovering. was it public knowledge? Was it public knowledge that he admitted uh, that he'd brought this whole UFO thingy? Everything that I'm saying was not broadcast to the public. Okay. Everything is just over the years. Saw. This is exactly what's happening. Oh. Another person at the time who uh, uh, requested um, anonymity said he set up his camera and just was taking just every three seconds, just, you know, a couple of flashes. And in one of them was this strange metallic looking ball in this vapor cloud. Frederick Valentik said... I don't know what it is as it's as it's flying all around him at incredible speeds. The air traffic controller said, can you identify? And because of transcripts, almost like sheet music, they will show when to inflect. And the air traffic controller was inflecting, meaning, what are you seeing? It was like, speak. like interrogative. And everything Frederick Valentik was saying was declarative down. He said, it looks like it's metallic. It's in a cloud. I don't know what's going on. And the air traffic controller would say, okay, well, can you identify it? And he would say, after a 17-second silence, he said, it is not an aircraft. That was the last transmission. Uh. 
The photographer who had set up his long exposure that day caught a metallic aircraft in a vapor field, which is exactly what Valentik said was happening around him. He couldn't see. One plausible explanation, which just blows my mind, was that he was flying upside down in Australia and thought he saw himself in the reflection of the waves. Swamp gas. It's a, sw- <laughs> it's a total swamp Mar- gas Ocean, explanation. Ocean gas. Moraben swamp gas. That's yep. just the Fata swamp Morgana. Piece. Oh, he saw a crazy sea. Yep. And so that doesn't make any sense. His dad then later said, well, he was an avid UFO believer and he believed in it. This case went nowhere from that point forward. The search was called off. But here's the thing. He tried out twice for the Australian Royal Air Force and he was both times denied because of his infractions. So check this out. He flew into restricted airspace once. And again, he was 20 when he vanished. And then deliberately, I didn't know this was a crime, deliberately flew into a cloud twice. <laughs> what, that's Did the just cloud so press charges or something? Like do? cloud violation? It's water vapor. I see I mean, a cloud. I got to take evasive maneuvers. I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I got to not. If you're a pilot, you got to fly into a cloud at least. Wee! Do you have to I make mean... sure the Care Bears aren't in it before you <laughs> kill them? <laughs> I didn't even know that was a crime. Wow. <laughs> the first time they plowed into a happiness bear or whatever. Cloud rights. <laughs> Deliberately Jeez. flew into a cloud twice. They're like, look, right, mate. Once we can, everybody gets one. Everybody gets one. The second time, now you just know. Now you just. This is before we started keeping things in clouds. Yeah. Yeah. Oh shit! That was great. Burn through my mixtape. That was fucking amazing. Several decades after 1978, a farmer who again requested anonymity said, "I can remember seeing a metallic shape in my." farm the next day but before that before i went to bed i saw a plane stuck to the side of a magnet in in the sky what wait okay who's okay someone said this how long after uh probably a couple years maybe decades i don't know but he's he's never he's never ever (laughs) been proven but i mean why would you say like just to confirm it just to you know to if you say you saw that you're gonna get you're gonna get print, you know. Well, I mean, what if the I government? I saw the plane. It was all stuck up the thing up there. What if? What Does if the government happen? says you're gonna live forever? Just never ever say those words again. I'd be like, you got it, boss. <laughs> I'm gonna live forever. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna trust the government <laughs> to li- to make you live forever? Anyway, that's all I gotta say. Uh, maybe something happened, but we cannot take these planes. I think uh, that would be a bad move. We double disappear. <laughs> Then we yeah, like, it doesn't yo, sound yeah. like the planes. I'm gonna fucking I mean, van- look at this. I don't, I don't even arms anymore. If they have a way, if they have a way to disappear us here, they probably. How am I gonna talk in the microphone if I don't have a face? We honestly, yeah, at this point, we should probably just help or try to help Angela if it's gonna work. Some yeah, point. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I don't think you need to. But help how can me. we help? We, where, how, how do we get oh, to where she is? She's in some the process, or maybe help you understand what you're doing a little bit better. Yeah, can you describe what you're seeing? Like, can you oh, move this one lever to the left? Which lever? We Which can't lever? see anything. We're in an alternate reality and dimension or well, string theory or I'm I, kind of floating with I Angela tried. now, too. I, I can tried. almost kind of see her. Is she fading into your existence as you fade out of ours? No, I'm fading into her existence, and you are getting quiet. What What's a dream happening? world it is for you. My wife oh my God. you. I'm, begun- I'm becoming the goddess head. Huh. I've, always, I've always wanted to be here. You've what? always wanted to be the goddess head. The goddess head? That explains a lot, really, when you really go back and think about it. I'm completely lost. That's fair. That would be a good I like it. <laughs> Ugh, I'm 
the, you would feel like disappearing would make you feel like less, but it seems to be weighing on you right. more. Right. Yeah. Feel like mm-hmm. heavy, heavier, and ha- less than heavy, heavy less. Yeah, heavy but, less. Yeah, we're like less than half of what we were. So less than half is but what, that's more like than the knowledge of the that is. Is that a quarter making it worse. How? What are you drinking over there? All Me? of it. All of what? All of the stuff here in this. That's it. How? First of all, how are your hands solid enough to be manipulating those cans? Are those force of will? Is that my gravy water? Oh no 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 never! I wouldn't. There's no gravy water in a can. Oh, okay. So we're canning gravy water now. I mean, uh, how, I'm not, but there's some, and I'm drinking. Oh, so I've, Pepsi or Coca-Cola Company are now canning gravy water. No, I hope they're drink. not involved. I think you know gravy water is more of a grassroots thing. You know? Thank you. Yeah, we're getting in here. We're bottling it at the source. We're canning it at the source. Nice, as it were. We have to. All organic. Um, organic, farm to table. Who will? Sink to face. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted that on a can, dude. Sink, sink to, to face. face. Drink it, <laughs> asshole. The <laughs> sink drink. So I didn't want to, you know, let the cat out of the bag, so to speak, but I. Did you bring the cat here? I think cat must have just been Schmutzy! let out of the bag. Oh, God damn it. Can I, I hold didn't... it? At least Schmutzy's not just bringing. No, look, bag. she just dropped right through your hands, dude. Just trying to can a little gravy water, and I found the process. There's apparently you use this big uh, metallic pot, granite ware, I think it was called, and you put the cans of gravy water in, and then you boil them to you know. Don't use a glass top though. Don't use. Do a glass not top. use a glass top. It has to be for coils. Make sure that the bottom is flat wow. if you're using a glass. You top. guys really are losing it right yeah, now. You, you got nothing else to do but can water and try can not to disappear. Water. So what I was going to make millions off of this. Mm-hmm. I had contacted Anheuser Busch. They were going to like completely like, decimate some type of Central American country to make a plant for us to start producing gravy water mass on like a mass scale. We were going to take over market share in America, and I was going to leave. And I knew as I was doing it, I, almost like he was whispering in my ear, Felix wasn't going to let me get away with this. He was going to enact some terrible plan, Ooh. some. That had a code name. I hate him more and more every It was going to be like, you know, CF, whatever, 289, and then uh, we were going to start dis- disappearing. And I don't I, like him. I thought That's of what's this. going on? Probably. Oh. It's, it's, it, it reeks to me of, uh, you guys ever hear of Louis Le Prince? Uh-huh. No, but I wish I could smell just so I could s- smell how bad it smelled. What? Louis? You can't smell? And why do you well, want you to smell the bad reeks. thing? It, it, it reeks, reeks of Louis Le Prince. It reeks, oh, you know, oh, just okay. like, you know. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Right. Right. Figuratively, oh, not. Okay. Curse my spiritual That was spirit. good. Yeah. I didn't. I, mean, I do I every day. You got me. I hate it. <clears throat> Louis Le Prince is a French inventor in the mid 19th century. Uh, he was making uh, strides in uh, motion picture uh, camera development. He actually uh, patented the one of the first uh, motion picture cameras that utilized a series of still photographs moved, um, but they were all taken for some reason. I never, I couldn't figure out why. All taken with different types of lenses, so the cameras, the images like bounced around as they were like projected back, and it was just a very kind of clunky thing. Chaotic. Oh, but <laughs> what year is this? Again? Uh, 1860. 6. Damn, that is right. Out of the fucking Civil War, right? So, like, uh, uh, who's it, Brady? Uh, yeah, so 1861, he was, like, cutting his teeth around France. Jesus. And then uh, 1881... That's exactly where it came from, too. He went to... Uh, he studied with some people in the United States and during that time um, became uh, involved with the team that was creating, essentially, the like, the... the the first motion picture camera that we know of today. It used a single lens, took uh, consecutive photos, and what was it? They had like the frame rate in here. It was like ridiculous. Matthew Brady. Six. Matthew Brady? Matthew Brady that was, was not the- one of the Bradys. And he didn't take one selfie. He actually I'm did. sure he yeah. did, yeah. yeah. But it was probably the first one you do as a selfie. That's crazy. But did you do a, a Belfie? And they did, what do you do, your butt? Like A belfie? They actually call it belfie. They well, actually call it when you take a butt selfie. Okay, stop. You just shook him. You just shook Kaz. <laughs> Kaz, no. Knocked him right out of story mode. Oh, my God. Yeah. He looked into the, yeah. looked into the corner I of the room. I was just trying to just understand. Like, he tried yeah. to like remove himself from the room. I don't like, want to live in a world with belfies. <laughs> leaving. <laughs> leave your body, Kaz. Just wanted there are his, no belfies just in this world. Just soul to just Whoa. fly away. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> man's a pro. Right back in. Oh, I love you, uh, Mr. Le Prince. Uh, 
this would have been a normal life, right? Like, he's just a guy who invents a cool camera, whatever. Sure. Uh, but in 1890, he disappeared in France. Uh, he was on a train to visit his brother in Dijon. Dijon? Delicious. And uh, <laughs> he was not seen again. Um, no luggage or corpse was found, and no one saw him. Some people uh, suspect that he uh, committed his, uh, like, a... Um, Faked his own death, a, a suicide, basically, uh, to escape bankruptcy. Uh, um, he tupac it. Right. To try to get out of... What is that what they say about Tupac? Machiavelli. Of course. Of course Machiavelli. Uh, one of the more interesting ones, and the one that uh, brought it to my attention, was um, that uh, at, the, at a very similar time, uh, another man in America who was kind of a fuckhead and who was kind of uh, getting his... Uh, his patents and inventions known at the time. Mm-hmm. Would you know who this is? Edison. Edison yeah, I guess was uh, actually had a competing patent for mm-hmm. a similar motion picture uh, camera. Um, and at the time, there, there are several people that basically posit that uh, Thomas Edison had something to do with this man's disappearance. Motherfucker, um, dude. Deep. He's so like it, the Hillary Clinton <laughs> of the 1800s. Where were his emails? <laughs> so it was, it was Edison because I was thinking like Alexander Graham Bell, that son of a bitch. That motherfucker. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to knife a relative of his. That's how <laughs> Where does I'm gonna, he live? I'm going to do some live? research. That's I'm going to find the closest one. I'm not going to do a lot of traveling. It's not that big of a deal. But if there's one within a 50 mile radius, they're getting a stabbing. Are Small gonna, knife. Are you going to call them first? <laughs> are you doing that's, how much I hate, nice. that's how much I hate the bells. And the fact that you're calling them is like even more ironic. Like, I'm using the device that your grandpa. Yeah, yeah so you go and for then strangle them with a phone cord. But no one has those anymore. So maybe not. Anyway, move so, on. So. Uh, <laughs> At the time that he vanished, Le Prince was about to patent his 1889 projector in the UK and then leave for Europe for his scheduled New York official exhibition. His widow assumed foul play, although no concrete evidence has ever emerged, and Rollins, um, one of the investigators on the on the case, prefers the suicide theory that he basically uh, off himself um, and disappeared to escape bankruptcy. Uh, in 1898, Le Prince's elder son, Adolf, who had assisted his father in many of the experiments, was called as a witness... For the American Mutoscope Company in their litigation with Edison. By citing Le Prince's achievements, Mutoscope hoped to annul Edison's subsequent claims to have inherited, <clears throat> I'm sorry, to have invented the moving picture camera. Uh, Le Prince's widow, Lizzie, and Adolf hoped that this would gain recognition for his achievement, but the case went against Mutoscope, and Edison ended up walking away scot free and then like electrocuting elephants. Yeah, that's that's weird. That's weird. That's the worst damn thing. That make, uh, just every time I think about it, it's pissed off. So there's several theories. Uh, he owed people money, etc. But a lot of that was kind of discredited because he uh, they went back and checked and his his company was successful. I mean, he had this patent was already um, good to go in, in France and the UK and stuff like that. So he was just trying to make it in America. And then Edison got wind of it. And had a creepy laboratory at his disposal where he could like make things disappear or you know electrocute huge things. Uh, what year is this, by the way? 1890. No. 1890. The Chicago World's Fair uh, is just a couple of years later, and I think Tesla beats out. Uh, is it Edison who came up with um, electrical? AC versus DC. Yes. Was kind of, I, I think it was kind of, I, I, know, I might be wrong with the timeline, but I think it was Tesla started getting uh, more popular and more traction, and then to show the dangers of it, that's, that's when it Edison sh- uh, shocked, uh, killed the gorilla, uh, the gorilla, killed the elephant, that's what it was, yeah. and to show how dangerous it was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so basically the Chicago World's Fair was the first uh, electric fair. So I feel like if Edison's involved and there's a disappearance, I like I like the Edison theory on this one. I think Louis Le Prince got 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 by Edison. Got suicided. He got disappeared by by Edison. <laughs> wow. I mean, calling it the 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 thing about mysteries and everything from that era. It, it just you you had this image in your mind of what it looked like because of uh, movies and TVs. Sepia I want to know tone. what it really looked like. Do you know it's oh, completely sure. different because you all the photos you see are stage photos. You don't you know don't see a real life photo for the most part because you have to set it up and stand are you there talking for about eight the minutes. Electrocution of the elephant. No, just saying that what they're like, what his evil lab really looked like. Oh, you know oh, what it looked yeah. like with yeah. Edison going through his evil lab. What sort of crap was actually going on in there? I mean, that's 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 if time travel exists, I want to go back and see some of that. That shit right there. Kill baby Hitler first, then go see the Edison lab. One, then the other. You, well, know, you, gotta... you know, I mean, we all die in the end. Everything uh, organic. Speak for your fucking self. Becomes wow. cold. I'm, I'm <clears throat> not talking about Angela. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's seriously. What you think Duh. I was. 
As my body fades away from me now, I think that there's there's less in life to be anxious about. That's positive. And I don't really care about anything else. I mean, this if is that's kind of freaking me out. Going to be the case, then I, I think, think we're ready to go. I think you're right. You know what? Let it happen. I think May, so uh, continue is, to make your blunders back there. We should there. let it happen. That's what we're uh, doing now. Angela, we're just, like we're just, you can just continue but, to make your blunders so you back are, there, Angela. You're good. You guys so are Def, gonna Def leave Leopard me alone. Lied. Def Leppard lied. It's, it is better to fade out. Blueberry seems, muffins. Seems like it, right? Because I thought we were supposed to burn out, but I guess it's better, we're just going to fade out. We burned out a long time ago. Fuck you, Joel. Time to do this. We're fading out. Oh God, Angela's chuckling. A classic Angela chuckle. It makes me it makes me laugh though. It, it is, really, yeah, yeah. As we slowly fade it's into non existence. It's kinda of, wee something that yeah, Weird, I don't have sends lungs. you off into the nothingness. <laughs> come on, come uh, on. A chuckle, really just a ha 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 as we slowly disappear off. into the nothingness. How is that funny yeah, that's to hilarious. All these episodes we could I was just calling get like a, a minute ago, but then hearing you laughing you think that I'm being mean anything. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> there it All is. right, that's what? it. Fuck what? this. What? Number forty seven. Flip the oh, quantum regulator no. and set the coordinates for stop as soon as we hit Z plus 200. The We're about to take these bitches to school. Trademark, man daddy. Yeah, Warping the- time what? vortex what? sound. Thank you for listening to Fort Fritz. Be sure to follow us on Tweetplot, Spliger, Egg Machine, Single Dads Seeking Single Robots.net. Thank you for listening to Fort Fritz 2218.